Today on the CTV News at 5, a Claris home woman will not stand trial in connection to a Vulcan senior's murder. Plus, more firefighters quit in protest to the firing of Blairmore's fire chief. And Excel Foods makes its first comment on the tainted beef crisis. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. A Claire's home woman charged in connection to a Vulcan senior's murder will not stand trial. The Crown has now stayed the charge against her. Bobby Joe Parks was charged with obstructing a peace officer in January after police found the dismembered remains of 77-year-old Otto Bunty Luce. She was to stand trial next month on the charge. Parks's common-law husband, Timmy Engel, was charged with first-degree murder in the case. Now, Parks originally pleaded guilty to the obstruction charge, but then changed her plea after a judge told the court that he wasn't convinced she did anything wrong. In January, court was told that police came to Parks's home looking for Engel. She told the officers he wasn't around when he was actually upstairs. Parks says she didn't realize the officers were there on official police business because they didn't say why they were looking for Engel. Parks' lawyer says now that the charge has been stayed, his client is relieved and just wants to get on with her life. She was associated by these charges with somebody who's been charged with murder and now with this day of proceedings, perhaps uh, people in the community will see that she's not associated with the charges that were laid against Tim Engel. And uh, she may have been associated with him in a relationship, but that doesn't mean that she was involved in any way at all with anything that he did. And it's just weighed on her and her family, and she's so relieved that uh, these charges have been stayed now. 36-year-old Timmy Anga will be in court next week to face charges of first-degree murder and offering an indignity to a human body. A, Mexi a Mexican man charged with a murder in Shaughnessy nearly two years ago was back before the courts this morning. Luis Ochoa Gamez is charged with second-degree murder in the shooting death of 24-year-old Moro Hernandez Renteria in October of 2010. Ochoa Gamez was arrested nearly a year later trying to cross the American border into Mexico. Ochoa Gamez is now on his third lawyer since he was charged. His new defense lawyer told the courts that he is still waiting on disclosure from the Crown. The case was set over until October 18th to set a preliminary hearing date. Residents in the Crow's Nest Pass are starting a petition asking the Municipal Affairs Department to investigate circumstances over the firing of the Blairmore Fire Chief. About 75 community residents gathered at the municipal office this afternoon carrying picket signs and calling for the municipality to reinstate Fire Chief Jamie Margatuck. The peaceful demonstration was a show of support for the municipality's volunteer firefighters, many who've walked off the job in protest over market tax removal. The municipality says dismissal of the Blairmore fire chief is an HR matter and reasons will not be made to the public. The pass is redeploying firemen from other stations as part of a modified plan to cover the emergencies. Now, the firefighter walkouts is rapidly spreading. Last night, 17 of the 19 firefighters in Coleman handed in their pagers and say they won't be responding to fire or emergency calls. The firemen say they are in full support of their Blairmore counterparts who quit earlier this week in protest. Coleman firefighters say they will only return to work when Mark Attack is reinstated. Past CAO Myron Thompson says he's disappointed, adding the members are showing a lack of professionalism and disregard for public safety. Meanwhile, the past Ratepayers Association met with MLA Pat Steer today and is urging the provincial government to look into the situation. You know, we have, we have got one of the most efficient and economical fire departments, to me, in Western Canada, you know. And uh, why you're fixing something that isn't broke is... is, is it just boggles my mind. And then to have something like this happen and not have one councillor or the CAO mention this issue at a public council meeting, I don't know where we're coming from. Firefighters in Hillcrest and Bellevue are apparently meeting tonight and they're also threatening to join the walkout action. A scary sight at a West Side drive through last night when a car burst into flames. Around 6 o'clock last night, flames blazed off this sunfire on the Taco Bell drive through on the corner of Columbia Boulevard and Laval Boulevard west in Lethbridge. The driver escaped unharmed and crews were quickly able to put out the fire. The car, though, was a total loss. 
The corner of the Taco Bell building has minor heat and smoke damage. Firefighters think that the blaze was likely caused by a short in the electric seat. And several fire bans have been lifted across southern Alberta tonight, just in time for the long weekend. Recent moisture means the county of Lethbridge and Warner, as well as the MD of Willow Creek, have now lifted their fire bans. The county of Warner, though, still does have a fire advisory in place, and permits are required for all open fires. Fire permits are still required before having an open fire in the county. As we were just saying, Dory, the long weekend's coming, and so are some sunny temperatures. Absolutely, and you know, people got up this morning, of course, they had to scrape the windshields. Uh, that's not going to be the case as we get into the weekend. You're right, sunny, warm temperatures. I'll have all the details coming up. Story. Excel Foods is speaking publicly for the first time since the E. coli scare triggered the biggest recall in Canadian history for beef. The company says it thought it had top-notch safety procedures but realizes they weren't enough. I want to make it very clear that the Excel Foods plant is not reopening today. Let me repeat that. They are not opening today. Today, the federal ag minister again promised the plant won't reopen until it's safe. The statement from Excel is the first since the E. coli crisis began exactly one month ago today. And today, more Excel beef was recalled, bringing the list of potentially tainted products to more than 1,600 nationwide. That as Excel employees wait for the call to return to work. They've been without jobs since the CFIA shut down the slaughterhouse last week, and they're not sure if they're going to get paid. And throughout the past couple of weeks, the owners and operators of Excel Foods have been strangely quiet. Consumers have been looking for answers as to what happened with the E. coli situation at the Brooks Packing Plant. But there's been nothing from Excel Foods until today. That's when they issued a statement which says in part, when we reopen our plant under direction from the CFIA, we will start with limited production runs. We will work collaboratively with the 48 CFIA inspectors to ensure something like this never happens again. More than 1,500 E. coli contaminated products are on the recall list, which stretches across Canada. Public health officials confirmed that four E. coli cases have been traced back to XL products. It's become a landmark in the village of Sterling, and now it may be coming the victim of its own success. Neighbors of the famed Sterling Haunted Mansion are now scared of what it's become. As Daryl Rummeld reports, council is considering a new bylaw, which could make problems worse. Councillors in the village of Sterling are searching for what may not exist, a happy ending for a haunted mansion and its neighbors. I think it's good for Sterling. It's time you guys listen. Well, you the village listen. says the mansion has grown well beyond a standard home-based business. Their plan is to rezone it from residential to direct control, which would regulate size, establish parking restrictions, and hours of operation. This is an issue that everybody has an opinion of. And it's also an issue that a lot of people have a different opinion on. So it, as far as difficulty goes, this is probably right up there with, well, this is the most difficult decision I've had to make to date. Trevor Lewington's house is a block away. He says the bylaw goes against the Municipal Planning Act. And he's gathered 179 signatures on a petition. That's more than the total number of people who voted in each of the last two by-elections. All agreeing with his claims. In my mind, this bylaw you know, serves the applicant very well. It doesn't address the concerns that residents have. The owners, Richard and Glory Reimer, say they too have gathered numerous emails and letters supporting the bylaw, allowing them to get a proper business license they require. Well, I hope that everybody sees that we're a valuable part of this community and that the haunted house should be given its zoning that it requires so we can continue pleasing the public. For 12 years, the Reimers have been putting the scare into guests. Now they say they're surprised by the backlash from neighbors. They say their property has reached its maximum size. Still, neighbors say they're not convinced. The public hearing was adjourned to a later date so councillors can gather all the information they require on traffic volumes, among other concerns raised by residents. It'll be another few weeks before we learn the fate of the haunted mansion. Daryl Rummel, CTV News, Sterling. Village Council says the continuation of the hearing will be made public. Should rezoning not occur, the owners say it could eventually spell the end of the haunted mansion attraction. Six rehabilitated birds were released back into the wild today in West Lethbridge. Oh. 
Four Swanson's, Swainson's hawks and two great horned owls flew into open sky once again after spending several months at the Birds of Prey Center. Every year, the center helps hundreds of animals become strong and healthy. AltaLink staff say they were thrilled to help releasing the birds, which included an orphaned owl found near their business. Absolutely, we're really excited to be here today. This owl was discovered inside one of our substations earlier this spring, and it was raised at the Birds of Prey Center uh, because there was a safety concern with that owl being inside our substation. So we're really excited that we could release it back into the wild. The easiest time for us is always in the summer because we get so many orphans. So it's just a matter of feeding them up and giving them lots of exercise and then sending them on their way later on in the year. So with any of the orphans we get in, we've got pretty well a 100% success rate of uh, releasing them back to the wild. AltaLink donated money towards the birds' rehabilitation. Tonight, community members will honor the lives of Indigenous women who have been murdered or gone missing in communities across Canada. Organizers of the No More Stolen Sisters event say Indigenous women are three times more likely to be victims of violence and more than five times as likely to be murdered than non-Aboriginal women. They say better living conditions and community support can help prevent these tragedies. The walk starts 6 o'clock at City Hall and the vigil will follow at 7 in Galt Gardens. On to the markets now where the loony Close the day on a positive note, along with West Texas crude. Here are the day's numbers.